Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be doing a hot or not on a new line called Pretty Vulgar. You guys have been requesting this nonstop. Every time I hop on Twitter, I see another request like, hey, there's this new line. And behind the scenes, I have been putting this to the test for about three weeks. I got a really nice sneak preview. The company actually reached out, sent me a ton of product. They also offered me money to do a sponsored post and I didn't like enough of it to go ahead and be like, yeah, sure, hand me that cash. There is really good stuff, but I wanted to give you a very even overall review and share with you the pros and cons. So this is very unfiltered and that's just how I do. So even though this was sent to me, it's unfiltered is my point. Ha <laughs> This line, by the way, is all about the packaging. You can't help but be like drawn in completely. When you see this stuff online, you're like, oh my gosh. What is that? Like, why is everything packaged like so cute? And getting it in my hands, I actually was a little bit disappointed with the quality of the packaging. So let's just start there. This line has everything from blush to foundation, to mascara, to lipstick. I mean, they came out with like a full line. So this is very, very exciting in the whole beauty space to have a new line at Sephora. So these products are cruelty-free. Most of them are vegan and the price point is okay. I feel like for the quality, it shouldn't be so expensive. I think that's my biggest gripe. So these are two of the bronzers and they look like cute little picture frames. Like it actually looks super adorable. I have never seen anyone use this kind of a design on a powder product. So I think it's very, very adorable. However, when you actually feel this, it's like, are we at the drugstore? No, we're not, we're at Sephora, and this is $32 for a bronzer, which I just think is way, way too expensive for what it is. I love the color of these bronzers, but they don't blend particularly well, and they don't wear a long time on the face. So I have a huge issue with it being blotchy. That's just not okay with me, especially when you're spending $32. So here's the thing, I looked at the package, I'm like, it looks cute, it feels really inexpensive and not very well made. There's not a mirror in here, it's just product. Okay, fine, I can get past that. Let me try this out and see if it's this wonderful, wonderful formula, but really it's just kind of stiff and hard to blend. So I'm not a fan of this. I have the shade Bronze B. I also have Pretty Witty, and this is technically, this is technically a blush actually, but it looks like a bronzer. Doesn't that look like a bronzer? I thought this was a bronzer. They have eight shades of blush. Again, similar claims. It says it's very pigmented, long wearing, easy to blend. The blushes are 26, the bronzers are 32. I do have another blush, which I am wearing right now. And again, this one is so hard to blend. I'm actually wearing this, but it made quite a big line right here, which there is a trick you can do by taking a matte pressed powder and kind of blending out that edge and almost take it over your blush. If you've ever overdone it or you have blotchy blush, that is a great trick to heal that situation. This one is just really hard to pick up. It's like that bright color that is a sheer wash, but once you get it on the face, it still is very tough to blend. So I just found the formula to be kind of odd. If your blush is going to be this hot pink, it better blend, you know? All right, let's talk about one of the pans that is amazing. This is really one of the most beautiful highlighters. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna pick up just a little teeny tiny bit more or a lot more. And I'm gonna show you before your eyes just how gorgeous, yes, this highlighter is. I just want it everywhere. It is so beautiful and icy. This is gonna work great for fair skin if you have a hard time matching highlighters that don't look a little more muddy on you because most highlighters have that like really harsh champagne kind of a tone. This is really beigey but light at the same time. This shade right here is called Shimmering Swan. The highlighters are 32, so the price is up there, but the texture on it, the formula, how creamy it is, but super metallic and eye-catching at the same time. I actually do really, really love that highlighter. They have a pretty incredible brow pomade. This surprised me. Using this, the formula on it is so good for carving out a brow, and then I put my 
wonder brow on top of it, which kind of seals it in like a top coat. And then you can literally like rub your brow, nothing's going anywhere. If you love a good brow pomade, this is the best one I have ever tried. It is much better than the Anastasia brow pomade. It just has the exact right texture and slip. I have the shade Twisted Tail. This is the Rising Arc Brow Pomade. It's technically called a gel. I keep calling it a pomade, but it's $24. It says it's waterproof. It's a really good product. So this surprised me with how nice it is. And then let's talk about the foundation. I kind of just skipped over that entirely. I am wearing it right now and I'm not loving it. I have worn this four different times. I've been wearing it more on my no makeup days, like on the weekend when I'm just kind of focusing just on a quick little something on my skin, not much coverage, not doing contour or anything like that. The disappointing thing is that even on those days, I just didn't really feel good about my skin. This is a very sheer product, but it's whipped. It has like that very thick whip puffy texture and it goes on okay, but it's a little bit blotchy and then kind of sheer, which I'm not a big fan of. As we can see, like it didn't cover this up. So this was a pass for me. This is $44. I cannot even get over that. Why is this $44? So this is a primer and a mascara. The primer's worse than the mascara itself. The primer is just this weird flat brush and you kind of paint it a little bit on your lashes and there's a little spiky comb on each side and you kind of comb it through, but it makes your lashes so chunky. Like you've never seen your lashes stick together more in your entire life. And then you go in with this mascara right here, which has a nice brush. You wiggle it on and fan it out and it's still just kind of clumpy, chunky stuck together. So I am wearing the mascara right now. Let me just go ahead and say I am okay with clumps, but when it really sticks together so hard where the lashes have so much product on them that throughout the day you have so much fallout, pigment going here and there, little crumblies, lashes that kind of are sticking together and out a weird way, then I don't like it. The Koki mascara that I tried for six bucks from Walmart, I'll link that video below, that one is incredible. This one crumbles. The mascaras are $24 a piece. I think if you're in Sephora and you're buying a more high-end mascara, go for Dior or YSL. This is just not worth the price tag. This, however, right here, oh my goodness, this is one of the most beautiful liners I have ever put on my eye. You do need to set this with a black powder, otherwise it will transfer. That is the one drawback, but I have never had a liner just glide on the way that this one does, and it looks like a little ink pot doing real good with those descriptives Tati okay so you like actually go in here and if you like stab it too much though I want to show you how deep this is look are you kidding me like it's very gel like and just foamy and whipped and soft so if you think it's going to be hard firm waxy at all it's not you put your brush in and it is so soft let me show you how intense that is it is so good, but again, you better set that puppy, set it with a black powder, a black eyeshadow, um, and then use like an Urban Decay All Nighter, otherwise it will transfer. I'm willing to still use this because it will line your eyes so effortlessly and it's smooth. It doesn't like fall into the cracks. It doesn't skip. You can use this over glitter, metallic. It's just the right texture to really be super opaque and cancel anything out. I think this is a beautiful liner. This does also come in gray and brown. So they have three shades. It's $24. It says it's waterproof. I don't really know about that because it does smudge a little bit and this also has vitamin c in it so it's going to condition your eyelids which my eyelids can use all the help they can get ha 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 look at the packaging look at that i mean does it not make you happy like rose gold and floral it's so cute there are eight shades of the pretty vulgar matte lipstick and i have all of them so i'm going to show you them swatched a few of them i tried on one of them i'm wearing with a gloss on top let me find that of course, the last one that I open is the one that I'm wearing. No, where's the one that I'm wearing? Why can't I find you? It is one of the most beautiful, bright, kind of purple berry colors I have ever put on. I love it. It reminds me of a MAC lipstick called like Retro Fuchsia or Retro something, but this one is even better. And the matte lipsticks that they have are 
just the right formula. They are very lightweight on the mouth. They are buildable without getting chunky. I'm such a fan of these. So let's run through the shades. We have, this is number four, If Kisses Could Kill, a really gorgeous vampy shade. This is even more vampy. This is Honest Truth. Then we have the shade Baby Doll, Prim and Proper, Mood Swing, Backstabber, and Blood Flower. So those are all Tati approved. These are gorgeous. The packaging is nice. The wear time is nice. The buildability is nice where if you eat lunch and you wanna freshen up your mouth, you don't have to take the whole thing off. You can just put another layer on and not worry about it looking really weird. So for a matte lipstick, the formula is A+. They do also have a plumping gloss and that is what I have on top. It's very minty. It feels a lot like Buxom's gloss where it has that kind of minty kick. It has a really nice applicator that it's almost like a flat doe foot applicator where you can just kind of press flat on the lip. You can go over like a center point that you want to and just kind of do a little bit of detail work if you wanna use this on top of another lip product. If you wanna use it on its own, it's still gorgeous. They have six different shades of this guy. It is $22. It is loaded with peptides to smooth out your lines and make lips look fuller. And then that minty thing that you feel is going to help circulation to actually give you that plump look to your mouth. This stays up top shelf. I have been reaching for this over and over and over. And yes, the cap is super, super cute. This is a standout product to me. It is $20. It is a matte lip moisturizer. So you could use this on its own as part of your skincare routine day and night, or you can do what I do, which is pop this on top of any of your matte lipsticks if they start to feel uncomfortable, but you don't wanna put a gloss on and you wanna keep them being matte. It is such a cool product. All right, let's talk about the metallic lip glosses because these are beautiful beautiful these are beautiful right is this not gorgeous i mean do you not just want to like put them all on at once i've done that i get new products and i sit down and i just like layer and layer it's kind of like i'm doing the hundred layer challenge on my own not filming but whatever these right here come in so many beautiful colors a lot of them are kind of things we've seen before, like these more basic colors. Secret Sabotage, Deception, and Weeping Willow are kind of the things that I pull my drawer of lip glosses open and I kind of see if I have other colors similar. And I do have other colors similar to this. Now, the one that I don't is this guy right here. I don't have anything like this. This is so beautiful. This is called Forget Me Not, and it is the most gorgeous metallic, magenta, berry-toned, beautiful metallic. This on its own, you do need to layer up a few times, but it's such a beautiful color and it does layer where you lose any patchiness and it wears so nicely that I think it's worth it. So I do really love this. The applicator is nice. It's the same as the other lip products that I've shown you, where it's really flat and it just hugs the lip entirely and does a nice job spreading the product around. And the other color that I really, really love is this red one called Scandalous. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Very whipped, very lightweight. I think the difference with these metallics is they have more of a puffy whipped texture, whereas a lot of the other metallics that we've seen that I love are more gel and thick. So these can easily be layered on top of other things without feeling like you're wearing too much on the mouth. So the My Lips Are Sealed Metallic Liquid Lips come in eight different shades. They are $24. Let me show you the other two shades I have not mentioned. I have particularly sophisticated. I also have brilliantly sneaky. So really fun names, really fun packaging. As a whole, there are a lot of items that I love that have launched with this new line. I really want the setting spray. It comes in the cutest bottle ever, and I think I'm gonna buy that. That's a huge, huge rundown of product. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, share the video, leave me comments below, and I hope you're having a good one. I will see you all in tomorrow's video. Mwah.